guys, this right here is a bit of a follow-up to a video that is going to be released today at right around 5 o'clock. Of course, it's about the, uh, let's just say TYT's little meltdown over being called out by fellow progressives because, uh, yeah, they're not woke enough. However, this right here is a topic that uh, required a second video because it seems to me that uh, the COPE is um, starting to set in for one Anna Kasparian, as I'll be showing you guys here in a second. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys, especially those who have been subscribed to me for a while, have kind of noticed that recently I've been talking more about her because of the way she's kind of a, how do I say, the flack that she got for coming out as a turf, not to mention the fact that uh, she got a lot of flack from the audience, and of course she got a lot of flack from Jink for disagreeing with her on how to uh, talk to people on the other side. We all know who TYT is. They hate anybody who disagrees with them. And, of course, it's also kind of funny to see them melt down over someone uh, calling them out because, yeah, they're kind of the people who, uh, if you guys remember Force the Vote, they're the ones who went absolutely crazy with any left-winger who disagreed with them on that topic. And conservatives like myself, we thought this crap was absolutely hilarious to watch them actually fight. But as I make the point in that video there, it's best to just go ahead and let them fight it out because... Unlike conservatives who, when they actually fight things out, they can kind of find a way to get back together and get along. Liberals don't exactly do this. Good old-fashioned character assassination. But there are several videos on that topic, so I'm not going to touch it here. However, it's this little gem right here that we need to be responding to. In, in California, at least, with the phasing out of gas-powered car, and they'll probably do the same thing with uh, gas stoves, is... They just ban the sale of any new gas powered cars or any new gas stoves. And so the technology that you have in your home, the gas stove that you have in your home, if it breaks, not only are you not able to buy a new one, but it gets increasingly more difficult to just repair it. You get what I'm saying? And so like- I that's, get it, but look, that's, a bump, that's the normal bumps in the road as you transition to things. I know, but Jake, like don't minimize the financial burdens associated with these things, okay? No, I'm not Cuz like I am- literally freaking the fuck out about the charging station thing. I'm like, it's gonna cost, we're gonna take out a massive fucking loan to pay for it. We're not getting any help from the fucking government on that. I did you did you guys ask, is there any tax credits? No, but seriously, Jake, seriously, there's no government help at all to Jake, transition you guys? I don't give a fuck about tax credits. No, no, I'm saying for the HOA. Like, no, so I, there's the been no talk of tax credits. I haven't seen anything about tax credits. I should look into it. Maybe there are tax credits, but I don't give a fuck about tax credits because you have to shell out cash. Now guys, okay. that clip is about half of the full clip, but I, I gotta ask the question, is Anna Kasparian beginning to cope? And what I mean by it is this right here. I go after Bill Maher a lot because people love to sit here and say that Bill Maher is being red-pilled on topics. Well, I've seen Bill for years, listened to Bill for years, and I can tell you right now firsthand, Bill Maher is not getting red-pilled on any form of topics. This is the same guy who rooted for a recession right before the uh, C91. I have to say it a certain way because of the way YouTube uh, loves to, uh, their algorithm loves to dock certain words. They love to knock certain videos because of that very phrase. But the thing is this right here. In the case of Bill Maher, he is simply waking up to the policies, the results of the policies that he, quite frankly, has been rooting for for years. TYT, I don't think that Jink is going through this because you'll actually see in the next clip, which I very stupidly uh, got rid of the last but second when Jink says we need to keep uh, we need to keep going through with electric cars. Now, guys, here's the problem that a lot of people don't have, and I'm not here to give you technicals or anything like that. I come at things from a much, much more common sense common man's point of view. Can we really and truly at this moment in time afford to switch over completely to electrical? Well, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, well, right now we have massive inflation, rapid inflation. Everybody's paycheck is a little bit smaller. And even though the Biden administration continues to tell us that jobs are being created, it turns it comes to find out when you actually dig into the numbers and look into the jobs, a lot of these are what we call a uh, Second jobs, people are taking out part-time jobs, obviously, to feed their families. The exact same thing happened when Barack Obama was in office. So it doesn't surprise me to hear Joe Biden constantly rail about the economy and say, well, the economy is doing great. Meanwhile, you walk outside, you go buy some gas, and it's anywhere between 3.30 a gallon or, in some cases, 6 to 7. I'm putting the national average of uh, gasoline prices in California, which, by the way, is where TYT is located at now. And you guys can kind of see that there are a lot of people that are hurting. By the way, California has probably the most expensive cost of living 
But yet we have to deal with people like say, uh, well, this butte here. Yes, I got to call out my own here. By the way, I'm not really a fan of Tommy Laren. I never have been a fan of hers. I always thought that she was mostly just common, if anything else. But uh, still at the same exact time, when I hear her say stuff like, well, DeSantis is the only person who could beat Gavin Newsom, I'm like, Tommy, Gavin Newsom may be going on a bit of a red state tour here, but his words are falling on deaf ears. Nobody here wants to hear the nonsense that he's been saying. I could go through everything he's been saying, but the problem is that, yeah, it's a lot of BS to go through. And quite frankly, if you know who Gavin Newsom is, you know he has a record of this. But here's the deal. Gavin Newsom will more than likely not be president, more, more or less probably even be the nominee of the Democratic Party in 2024, maybe 2028. And even then, he would probably get absolutely destroyed by the common run of the mill Republican because California is such a crap hole and such a very, very bad spot right now. Nobody wants to have uh, California prices. Go ask people in Florida right now how that's working out for them, especially seeing how a lot of Californians have moved to Florida and actually wrecked, they actually pulled up the... Uh, it boosted the uh, overall amount of rent. It boosted the property values. And now everybody's paying a much, much higher amount of money for just about everything, not to mention the fact that you already have rampant inflation. Just figured I'd go ahead and throw that out there. So, no, Gavin Newsom has absolutely no chance of winning the presidency. However, as you guys can see, even some liberals in that state are beginning to cope. And by cope, they're coping very hard. Jink, in my opinion, is a zealot. I don't think he, uh, I believe he's very, very much into the whole mission, of course, being a progressive and whatnot. But every now and again, the mask will slip and you will see that, in fact, he's actually operating more on the neoliberal side. The neoliberals want to introduce electrical cars. They want to introduce this full green energy, which, by the way, I have said on multiple occasions, I am in favor of all forms of energy. However, you've got to use gas for the time being because, not because it's so much cheaper, it's because the vast majority of the country has gas cars. Now, you're saying, why are you talking about cars when she's talking about stoves? Well, once again, not that many people have gas stoves. But still, though, at the exact same time, not everybody can afford a, an electric stove at this point in time. Now, I stay in an apartment. You guys can obviously tell. I'm staying in a two-bedroom apartment. This right here is the biggest room in the apartment. Of course, I've got a section over here where the kitchen table is. And of course, i got bedrooms, this, that, and the other. All that stuff is back there. I'm actually more towards the front of the apartment here. This place where it already came with an electrical stove. Well, right now, most people are renting. The reason why they're renting is because they don't have the money to actually go and buy a house or put down on a house, not to mention the fact that you have a market that is uh, starting to look a lot like 2008 and what happened there. That right there, by the way, is probably a different project at a later date. But the thing is that people cannot afford it. People can't afford to go buy an electric stove right now. People just don't have the money, especially in very, very liberal California. Now, I'm not saying that Anna is uh, starting to see what people are thinking, but it is possible that even with her salary, she may be feeling what people are already going through, where Jink, on the other hand, probably has more money. But let me say this really quick. As an opponent of TYT, and I've always been an opponent of these people, I've always thought these people were absolutely just full of bad ideas. I do got to say this right here. I love to give Jink hell, especially over getting on a plane that... Uh, or dying to get on a plane that had mechanical failures, but I will give him credit in this regard. In that previous video, I was talking about the serfs and the people who ran the channels that they were all talking about. They were all talking about about, about Jenkins and Bender and who else? Uh, that guy from the Humanist Report. There was also that girl who put these tweets here up. Yeah, um, let me say this. I, I, I will give TYT credit in one area. And that area that I'm giving TYT credit in is that I'm giving them credit in the fact that they will at least board the plane. Lance and these people here, Bender, Humanist, they don't even leave their apartment. They don't even leave their home. It's one of the main problems that we have with Libs is that they don't know how to actually properly experience things. They talk about things from a complete lack of experience. They talk about things like, I'll tell you what, ask the vast majority of these suburban liberals, ask them if they have ever paid any bills or anything. Just, just straight up ask them. Which leads me to the second half. The solution from the government in terms of like, no, no, you get you get financial benefits for doing this is fucking tax credits. No, I don't want I don't want the tax credits. I won't give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay? Don't tell me this bullshit about how I have to buy like some new fucking thing because the government's forcing me to do it. And then like after I file my taxes, there's a certain portion of that purchase that might be tax deductible. Like, fuck off. I I'm you, so sick of it. It's just like, mm, like 
endless pressure, 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 pressure. I can't take it. Yeah, I hear you. And and we ask too much of the middle class, we ask too much of the average person. Oh, the person. middle class is the most fucked group of people in this country. No, I hear you on all that. But at some point, we gotta go to electric cars. We don't have a choice. Like the plant's burning, so we gotta go to electric cars. So when California says, hey, let's go to electric cars by whatever the number is, 2025, yeah. etc. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be tough, but yeah, and when but I, at the same time, now prices are coming down, right? Okay, but Jake, let's not minimize the cost of like actually charging those cars, right? Because here's the, here's the other thing. So Gavin Newsom pushes for and succeeds in passing legislation in California that would ban the sale of electric cars at a, at a certain year. I think it is 2025, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not, maybe it's 2035. I don't remember the exact year, but eventually, pretty soon, you're no longer gonna be able to buy a gas powered car in California. Literally like that same month, Gavin Newsom's like, oh, there's a heat wave and our energy grid really can't handle it. And so I'm just gonna ask you guys, if you have electric vehicles, please don't charge them right now. It's just, no, you okay. can't do that. Like I said before, I very stupidly cut the very final split second of that uh, clip. In that final split second, Jink basically says, look, we need to continue on with the electrical car agenda. As I have said before, I'm in favor of all forms of energy, but we can't afford to go to electrical cars right now because, quite frankly, people don't have the money to buy a Tesla at this moment in time, mostly due to the inflation, mostly due to the policies that these people have pitched. Now, is it possible that Anna may be saying, look, maybe these things that we've been pitching, maybe the fact that we kind of talk to the other side like they're trash or whatnot, as, as it, has it maybe occurred, maybe, am, am I starting to think that maybe it's possible that maybe these ideas are very bad ideas? I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying that Anna Kasparian is turning to the right. I'm not saying that at all, okay? It is possible that she may be on board with moderating her positions a little bit more, which is what most Democrats are, is just good old-fashioned moderates with, with slight liberal tendencies. This period right here from the far left, these are what I like to call the unhappy people, the infected, the miserables, because at the end of the day, that's what they are, is very, very miserable people, because mentally they're irregular. Now, there are studies to back that up. I even did a project on it. Now, let me say this, okay? This is where I'm going to end the video at. Lowering taxes, having more money in your pocket, that's a conservative position. It really is. I mean, having lower taxes gives you more money in your pocket. Having the rich man have a, which I think is kind of funny too, because they rail against the rich, but yet they took a $25 million payout from Jeffrey Katzenberg. And I want to say Buddy Rummer has thrown in a lot of money as well. They've been paid off by a lot of people. They themselves have got a lot of money. So obviously they have to have the rich man to kind of get them through. This was something that was debated in the shapiro Jink Younger debate, where Jink basically got lambasted the entire time about railing against the rich and, high, and uh, wanting a, 90% tax rates and Keynesian economics, when in fact Keynesian economics doesn't even work in theory. Yes, I'm kind of borrowing from Ben here, but he's not lying. The fact of the matter is, is that these people are, quite frankly, hypocrites. You rail against the rich, but then you take a payout from the rich, okay? Just go ahead and throw that out there. Now, what I'm trying to say is this right here. Recently, we have seen Anna Kasparian come out as a turf, get mad with the radical left because they want to continue with the wokeness stuff. They call women birthing people. The whole cis bull crap. We've also seen Anna also get upset with Jink over the fact that Jink wants to brand all right wingers as racist, homophobe, bigot. She's disagreed with him on how you on how you comment and how you connect with people on the other side. She's uh, gotten upset about that. She's had literal meltdowns recently, and now she's saying that the policies that she's living under absolutely sucks. It's starting to sound to me like that joke we had about Anna doing a video for PragerU, Why I Left the Left. It's starting to sound to me like uh, that possibility is burning a little bit brighter and brighter and brighter every day. Not to mention she's also came out and become a little bit more uh, conservative on the topic of crime. What I'm saying to you guys is no, I don't think that Anna Kasparian is leaving the left or leaving the Democratic Party, which by the way, she already said she was done with. But what I am saying to you is that... Uh, this is a classic case of cope, and sometimes cope oftentimes can go in different directions. I just figured I would throw that out there because you never know. Guys, John Claymore, if you like the content, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign up in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later.